Hello and uh, thank you for joining. My name is Khaled Fattal and I'm the chairman of the MLI Group. This morning, Sunday, um, watching uh, on the BBC the Andrew Marr show, many of you outside of the United Kingdom may not uh, be aware of it, but it's a highly uh, detailed uh, political investigative and uh, uh, show with interviews. Um, Andrew Marr was actually off. Uh, replacing him was a, uh, a very seasoned uh, journalist who was interviewing none other than former head of the CIA, director of CIA, Michael uh, Hayden. And as you may know, Michael Hayden is a well-known uh, person in the security space. Uh, he's a retired United States Air Force four-star general and former director of the NSA and Principal Deputy Director of National Security Intelligence and Director of the Central, Central Intelligence Agency. So this man comes in and he has served with or under uh, three separate uh, presidents of the United States. So he comes in with serious uh, credibility, experience and pedigree. Why this, this is relevant? As you may recall, I have posted some video uh, uh, messages and uh, uh, videos on the topic of the fact that our democracy is under unprecedented threats. Plus, you may have watched the video on the drums of war echoing out of Washington DC and Tel Aviv, plus the Iran nuclear deal uh, the, uh, and uh, President Trump uh, walking out of that international deal, which was also um, a United Nations deal. I want to bring you in some of the pieces of the interview from the Andrew Marr show, courtesy of the BBC and Andrew Marr's uh, uh, show. And as a matter of fact, some of the questions that were relevant to validating why the drums of war are echoing and being prepared, not only in the Middle East, but also to involve the United States, are probably uh, relevant. It makes it relevant to listen into the uh, to the uh, to the uh, statements by uh, Colonel Hayden. So let's listen into one of the questions and his answer, and then um, I'll follow it up uh, with a with a follow up uh, excerpt as well. You called President Obama's nuclear deal with Iran imperfect. I did. So why don't you praise Donald Trump rather than criticizing him for pulling out of it? Fair, fair question. And so I had all my complaints about the deal. I thought we should have been tougher, but we do have a deal. And now, Emma, let me tell you not my view, but the view of the current American intelligence community, President Trump's intelligence community. Number one, the Iranians aren't cheating on the deal. There have been no material breaches. Number two, with this imperfect deal, the Iranians are further away from a weapon than they would be without it. And number three, we know more about the Iranian program with this deal than we would without this deal. We have parked the nuclear question at least temporarily, seven, eight, ten years. And so I don't think, particularly with everything else going on, uh, we need to rip that up. And the president, based on, you tell me, instinct, instinct intuition, Campaign language ripped up the deal. Well, as you heard, this is also bringing a new light of credibility to why this is quite significant as to what the Trump administration is doing. But if you still had any doubts, how about this? Aren't you impressed by Donald Trump's ability to bring Kim Jong Un to the table? Well, uh, frankly, Emma, the answer is not yet. I mean, where we are now, we have been before. Uh, with North Korea, and I wish the president well, and, and I and I and I wish him success. But but my issue is the president seems to be making decisions based on something other than than objective truth. He he. Let me give you one specific example that I that I use in the book and, and illustrates why I'm uncomfortable. <clears throat> he was being asked by an American newsman about the so-called Obama wiretapping of Trump Tower. And, and, and the newsman was pursuing him, almost stalking him. What evidence do you have? What proof do you have? And finally, the president, out of exasperation, simply says, 
look, a lot of people agree with me. People are saying, a lot of people are saying. To me, that, that is a microcosm, a, a little morality play for what's happening in my country. Well, that also leaves us with less ambiguity as to what the plan of the United States government led by Trump and the neocons. But what's even more interesting, listen to the explanation that Colonel Hayden gave as to why Trump is doing this. He actually categorizes it as instinct or something else. It's quite relevant to, uh, to actually uh, co com compare and contrast his statement with the fact that he did not mention the alignment of Trump with the Netanyahu government and the neocons and why it is not by accident that, hey, uh, that uh, uh, Trump is doing what he's doing, but it's actually part of a, 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 a specific plan to alienate communities further and create greater discourse whereby only the strong will survive. Listen in. And the president, based on, you tell me, instinct, instinct, intuition, campaign language, ripped up the deal. And number three, and this is the important, more important part, Emma, number three, by doing that, the president actually made the United States less safe because he lived the narrative of our enemies in the Islamic world, the ISIS and Al-Qaeda supporters, that there is undying enmity between Islam and the West. That's the kind of damage, Emma, that I'm suggesting that will be long-lived. It will be subtle in its effect, but its effect will be real and we'll be feeling those effects for a long time. And that's the kind of thing that will be more difficult to undo. I think that leaves you with even less ambiguity. Worth noting, listen to the to his statement on the style of uh, President Trump and why it's not facts-based, but how he appeals to his own constituents who really believe his rhetoric, regardless of whether it's facts, fiction, or, uh, or otherwise. Listen in. I hope I'm wrong, but it, but it doesn't, that particular case doesn't undercut the broad approach to policy making, which seems to be detached from an objective view of reality. We can talk about, we can talk about, for example, immigrants. We can talk about the Iranian nuclear deal. And, and in each case, the president seemed to be making decisions other than on what his intelligence community and other fact-based institutions have been telling him. But what's to stop Donald Trump getting a, a far greater and more encompassing deal? Well, uh, number one, the objections of the Chancellor of Germany, the President of France, and the Prime Minister of Great Britain. But, but beyond that, those three heads of state, in the British case it was the Foreign Minister, came to the United States, suggested that they were moving in the direction of trying to get unified action against that particular problem, the ballistic missile testing on the part of the Iranians. Almost all of the American government advising the president, what I call the, the fact-based guys were advising the president to give this more time so that we can work in unity with the Europeans. Perhaps John Bolton disagreed with that, but everyone else, it seems, did agree. And the president, based on, you tell me, instinct, instinct, intuition, campaign language, ripped up the deal. If the president governs in any way similar to the language he uses as a candidate, I think we all have a great deal to be concerned about. For example, he said as a candidate, a serious candidate to be the President of the United States, that it would, it would be his intention to not just kill terrorists, but to kill terrorist families. That he would do far worse than waterboarding against captives because they deserve it. That NATO was, was a burden on the United States. That our, our, our alliance structure was a series of bad deals. Now that you've heard I think it's worth paying attention to the specific words that Colonel Hayden mentioned. I'm going to play those short few seconds of words right now. Listen to this. And the president, based on, you tell me, instinct, instinct, intuition, campaign language, 
ripped up the deal. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any ambiguity that your democracy, your privacy, and then the, the, are under, are under, under unprecedented threat, that the next war that will be launched will be launched in your name, it's time to actually wake up and wise up. With that in mind, I'll leave you with the thought of treat politicians with as much uh, uh, distrust for the time being as we can until we can determine who is capable of telling the truth, telling the facts, and, t and giving their general public and their citizens and their voters the facts and the truth, not the manipulation of these uh, facts and truths. And on that note, I bid you farewell. I hope you have a great day. And uh, until next time, see you soon. Bye-bye.